Welcome to the Alexandra Wenman Show. Today I'm with Geraldine Beskin of the Atlantis Bookshop in London, right on Museum Street near the British Museum. And it's the oldest spiritual bookshop in London, I believe, Geraldine. Uh, Watkins is older than us, but they are a mystical bookshop, is how they started. They came out of the Theosophical Society. We've always been magical. We were set up 95 years ago by magicians for magicians. So that's the way we, we keep it. We're Western. Uh, in our thinking. It's oh, more Western yeah. magic. Yes, than definitely, definitely. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because looking around this shop, it's it's like this incredible library of alchemy and wicker and, yeah. you know, and there's so there's so much here. I, I want to ask you a little bit about how you came to be o- owner of this shop and how you came to run this shop in the first place. Well, my father um, st- was, was a, a second-hand bookseller and came in here one day because he had some stuff on the esoteric. And he and the original owner just performed a fabulous friendship, basically. And so when Michael died, we then bought it. And then I was here with my mother, and now I'm here with my daughter. And I had the 90s off when we sold it, and the shop struggled very badly then. Um, But we came back, it went boing, and it's been great ever since. That's yeah. fantastic. And you you also run events here and talks, don't you? We do. We do. We do. Yes, we have workshops, talks, launches, um, strange things happen. Uh, all sorts of bits and pieces go on here. Yes. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hook into that strange things happen. I want to hear some <laughs> stories. So t- tell me some of the incredible stories that have happened here at Atlantis. Well, we had an off-grid event uh, not so long ago where we had a very famous pop star here uh, for uh, a friend of his. In walked another very famous pop star. Up the street, we then had um, one of the very expensive TV chefs doing some filming. Further up the street, there was uh, a member of another very famous pop group and the Queen of Denmark. And so... (laughs) We attracted them, we think. You know, there, there, there's also, but there are the weird things that happen and strange, strange, strange coincidences. Um, it, it, for me, not long ago, my stepbrother died and I was told about that. And 20 minutes later, I was pricing some secondhand books. One of the book reps came in and said, oh, I knew that author when we were in, in Kenya. And I said, oh, I, I never knew you were in Africa. And I said, my stepbrother who's just died was in Kenya. And he had worked with this bloke's father. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Now that Small is world. that is a real no such thing as a coincidence, no, right? No, <laughs> you know that that was extraordinary because, yeah. Um, yeah so, it, it, but various things happen. We, you know, we we this is where um, modern day witchcraft started. Mm. Uh, our room downstairs is where Gerald Gardner, the grandfather of modern witchcraft, had his first London coven, and mm. our founder published the book High Magic's Aid as a a way of beckoning people to the shop so that they could be vetted to see if they were suitable to become witches and things like that and so we um, that is a very important part of of our history and it's quite a weird thing to do if if you think about it but it it stuck and so we have the Gerald Gardner room now which we're, we're very proud of and that's where our events happen so people can have access to it you see so you are the original Hogwarts yeah 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 for sure original school yeah 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 yeah, yeah, it's Western it, and it's magical. It's not Eastern and mystical, partly because we're too small. Mm. We can't take in both. Mm. Um, but with, you know, there's such a rich history in Western magic with Kabbalah, with witchcraft, with alchemy, with ceremonial magic, with astrology, with everything you can think of that, um, that, that keeps us quite busy enough. Yeah. And what's your background? So how did you start getting into all of this? Was it through the shop or were you interested before you came into the shop? I was in, you know, I read ghost stories and I read various things because I had access to stuff as a kid. Um, I'm the only one of my family, of my siblings, who has taken to this in this way. We all had an element of psychism about us, but I'm the only one who has worked with it for, you know, all my conscious life, basically. Yeah, because it seems that you and this shop go hand in hand, yeah, right? Yeah, we do, yeah. and I'm very proud that, my, you know, I, my daughter Barley is my partner in the shop. So as a mother and daughter combination, we are similar enough and dissimilar enough for it to work very well. Well, it's lasted 15 years so far anyway, and, uh, you know, I'm pleased that it suits her. So, you know, when you talk with her, she, she's got her own spin on it, I'm sure, but uh, I think it's a good it's a good 
combination. And, and it's, it keeps us interesting. No two days are the same. And our interest, it, 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 the, these are subjects that you never get to know everything about. No. Every day, you can learn just a little snippet. You can open a book and half a sentence makes sense of something that you just hadn't seen or you, you know, you'd forgotten about or whatever. It's very rewarding, this, this world, this life. So we like it a lot. That's it. You can never get to the bottom of the uh, the cauldron of magic, can no, you? It's, it's no, 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 constantly no, no. unfolding. And it doesn't have to be ritualised. It doesn't have to be formalised. Yeah. It's being aware that it is there. That's yeah. the important thing. And it, it wants us. It wouldn't exist if it didn't want to dialogue with us to that extent. Mm. No, so signs and omens and things like that, without driving ourselves crazy, there are little bits that give you spins on the day and, and things. And, and it, as I say, we, we like it a lot. It keeps you intellectually busy as well because you know researching start finding things out for people and it, it's um yeah it, it's it, it's not like normal retail that's for sure <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and every day is different yeah yeah we're our own little bit of diagon alley here uh, yeah. it, it totally is diagon alley but you've you've had some very famous uh people through these doors and uh, as you look around the the bookshelves there's a lot of books by alistair crowley in here aren't there well, so he was our most notorious customer and we do try to talk about only our dead customers rather than our live ones yeah. because we still have princes and paupers and street sweepers and everybody in between coming to us and so their privacy is important to them exactly. so but Crowley is a case all on his own <laughs> and he was a great friend of our founder and we published 777 and things like that and we're very proud indeed of our Crowley heritage we, 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 we like it a, a lot we respect what the man had to say I think he was a monster in lots mm. of ways but the what he did is really it's turned so many people on to so much mm. you don't have to be a follower mm. but there again there will be something that you read that just gives you the courage to be yourself mm. I yeah. think in the beginning he really got it, didn't he? He, he really absolutely had it. got mm. it, absolutely got it. Mm. We have a print here of him in a very mystical pose. It's a yogic pose. And people forget, because he was a drug taker and a womanizer and everything else about that's not, that is considered negative. Although a lot of people have done what he did, mm. but they haven't climbed mountains. They haven't had the extreme uh, uh, magical and ex mystical experiences. But we keep that one here to show people that in, in essence he was... He believed in the sacred, mm. and mm. That, that was his motivating force through his life, and he wanted people to discover that in themselves. And have you had, are there any stories about him that, that you know of that you can tell with regards to the shop? Uh, mm, I think you've got me there. No, in a word, other than he um, came here during the Second World War because there was going to be an exhibition of the Thoth tarot cards, and it, the place that it was going, going to be held in uh, got bombed. Oh, and wow. so there was a notice put on our window and the artist, Lady Frieda Harris, that I'm writing about, came in and spoke with Michael about it because, again, they were all friends. Uh, but she forgot to tell Crowley because she didn't know where he was living at the time. And he came in, discovered the exhibition had been cancelled and went absolutely potty. Well, you know, it wasn't his fault, he, you know, anybody's fault. Oh. It was Hitler's fault. But, it was, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he sort of blamed everybody in sight for that, really. So, but we know he was here very frequently. I've got letters from him to Michael and things like wow. that. And um, so, yeah, so, but again, you know, people didn't have that feeling of history they didn't have that self-awareness of where they archived everything mm. in those days you just lived your life mm. you know yeah. like us we're too busy to keep diaries you know yeah. which is a, a great pity logged. it gets logged which yeah. is a great pity but we threatened to write the untrue history of the atlantis bookshop one day which will be a parallel text there'll be the rumor <laughs> about us and then there'll be the fact of the matter on the other page so. i think there are a lot of people that would devour that book i think it should be done oh we, we've we've got everything from tunnels to cthulhu downstairs Amazing. yeah it's actually the tube but don't tell the people that believe it's the tunnels of cthulhu uh you know um there's another crazy one that um, sometime in the 1970s, uh, a man hung himself downstairs. Wow. Well, he would have had difficulty and I would have noticed. <laughs> yeah. 
you know. You don't normally go home and have a strange man locked in the shop that you just don't really, you just say, oh yeah, fine, you know, he's there and I'll just go home and leave him to do whatever he's going to do. And the body just evaporates. Yeah, yeah, and the body just evaporates, <laughs> you know, and the police were never called and yeah. I never noticed him and, you know, people just talk rubbish, but they can't resist it. Oh, they love a drama and a oh, mystery, don't yes, they? yes, 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 yes. That's fantastic. Yes, yes, yes. And I love, you've got a, you've got a combination of like new books and old books. Mm. What's the oldest book you've ever seen in the shop that, that you can recall? Boo, boo. Uh, well, we used to sell, um, I mean, back in the day, we used to sell, um, you know, uh, sort of dusty, smelly vellum type things and all the rest of it. And Manly P. Hall, the great American mystic, he shopped here in the 1920s and he bought medieval manuscripts from us. That, that much we do know. And uh, give me a moment, we actually have a book. <clears throat> I have my eye on this one before. Which is called? The, the oldest, oldest books, books in the world. world. So they're not physically not necessarily terribly yeah. old, but we've got the oldest books in the world. Actually, yeah. the words in there are... Yeah, yeah. so what, what year does this go back to? Oh, this is have a little peer sort of, in. Um, 1920s, something like that, I expect. But as I say, it's... Uh, you'll have to read it. I haven't got my glasses on. No, it doesn't say. But anyway, the, the, yeah. it's, these are the oldest books it, in the world. And it, it goes back. It's got papyrus... In yeah. here, we've got Egyptian papyrus. Yeah. Well, oh, so the scribe of, of Annie. Things. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah. I'm going to have to delve into this and have a look. Yeah. How amazing. But it's a fun title to have. It's a great you know, title to a, have. A nice boast for somebody to have on their bookshelves. Beauti look how beautifully yeah, done it is, too, great. all embossed and everything. Yeah, and there's a little gilt header there. It's, like, it's just lovely. Part yeah. of the magic. Yeah. So Part of the magic. And you fun. you just don't know what you're going to find in here. I mean, it's just like you can come in and there's like shelves and shelves. It's only a small shop, but the amount of information and yeah. knowledge here. And I mean, even just talking to Geraldine, the amount of wisdom and knowledge that you have. So, <laughs> should we... So, Geraldine, this is the Ancestors Corner of Atlantis Bookshop. What can you tell us about the corner over here, this shrine? These are our magical ancestors, really. Here we have our founder, Michael Houghton, with my dad. And then we have Crowley above. A portrait of Madame Blavatsky, who was absolutely fabulous. And she was Russian royalty on her mother's side. She founded the Theosophical Society and... Basically, it was a, a, the first non-Christian society that was respectable enough for men and women to join together. And then a few years after, and that was 1875, and then a few years after that, the members variously wanted to do practical magic rather than just mystical stuff. And so this man here, McGregor Mathers, in the oil painting, he and three others founded the Golden Dawn which is a, a ritual magical society, which is still going very strong very around famous. the world. Yeah. And that's the original portrait. Oh, fantastic. And it was painted by his wife. So it started with um, Mathers, Woodman and Westcott, and then the first real person to be initiated was a woman. And that was McGregor Mathers' wife. And uh, as I say, she's the one who painted that, but they kicked that off with a woman. And then women were very dominant in the early years of, of the society as well. Um, and then we have Tolkien, we have a Baphomet, is a nod to Crowley, we have green men, we have various statues and so on. So this, these are the ancestors. Um, these Celtic uh, figuring, figures were done um, to show, you know, to by a friend of ours who's, who's an artist, but to show how people did. Th there's a rough cutness to them, but it shows how things emerged from the earth. Mm. You know, the, the birth of art mm. came through clay mm. in lots of ways. Um, and then we also have um, this. This same artist, oddly enough, did this, which is the Horror of Babylon who's obviously very important in the Crowley world. And so uh, it's, it's kind of fun, but it's a, it's a very fine piece of g good art there. Incredible detail in yeah. that too, isn't yeah. it? And really talks about this all the journey yeah. through and the then in amongst all this, we then have our candle section. So people can start with something as simple as a candle and have an awareness of why they're lighting it, the help they want, the colours have their own symbolisms so it makes perfect sense that if you want to get rid of something you light a black candle if you want the mayhem to stop in a way then start off purifying with white 
and so on. You can you can make it. You know, it's not a, can, pan, candle magic is very useful. It's very clear cut. Very a great way of doing magic without it costing you a fortune. You don't mm. need robes. You don't need swords. You don't need all the highfalutin stuff at all. But it's the concentration that makes magic work. It's all it's, it's all intention, isn't it? Is it is intention, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Anyone can do it. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. And can I ask about the the shop logo? How long is, has this been the logo for? Is it always always was the logo? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. very kind yeah. of nineteen twenties yeah. vibe, isn't it? Art yeah. deco vibe. Yeah. Do you could you share anything about the symbolism that's that's? It's included? about control mm. of the heavens, of yourself, of the underworld. It's you know really quite a potent piece. That. Very powerful piece. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Ooh. And Geraldine, is there anything else you'd like to share with people about the shop or your your experience of being in the shop? Other than if you're doing what you want to be doing in life, then your life is a rich and rewarding one. I'm doing what I want to be doing. Barley's doing what she wants to be doing. You know, we could close the door tomorrow and go off and look, you know live on separate South Sea Islands if we wanted to. But we actually want to be here. Mm. And that's why we have positive lives to that extent and that you often we are trapped in circumstances that we can't break out of mm. but we can live more rewardingly within them mm. and that's what this gives us it gives us an a, a strength in our inner lives and it it doesn't involve money it just involves nibbling away to make situations better you know it, it, that's well you know that's what we all have to do yeah instead of wanting mm -hmm. you know it's like I, I have a friend and he always wanted to be a mountain climber and so he set off and he decided to climb the Alps uh, and decided to climb Mount Mont Blanc in fact and he climbed it but most of the way up there he was thinking what is that strange noise there's actually a railway that goes up the mountain <laughs> right but he did what he wanted to do yeah. and he could have done it far more easily but he yeah. didn't know that at yeah. the time but he then thought well I enjoyed that I want to do more and so he then went to the south of France to climb there and he realized that they were the wrong sorts of mountains wasn't okay. that interesting there's a, there's a wrong sort and a right sort for him there wow. was. okay and things like that and it, it's the beginning of yeah. something yeah. So it's a good job he didn't throw in his career yeah. and set off to you know be a world explorer. Yeah. Partly because I don't think he can read a compass, but you know it really it's the doing is the thing. And sometimes mm. you are disappointed. But what makes you want to do that? If as a kid you wanted to ride or whatever, then get a riding lesson. Yeah. You might may find sitting on top of a horse scares the bejesus out of yeah. you. It's far too high. It's too smelly. It's too everything. Yeah. The risks are too great. Yeah. Well. Now you know that. You can get it out of your system. Get, you've got to get it out of your system. Yeah. And it's not a huge expenditure. No. But with, with all this, it's the path you can be taken on yeah. is just so huge. And it's all about enjoying the journey, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and often it's rough. Yeah. You know, I'm very opposed to this endless positivity that we're yeah, meant to have yeah. now because it's unrealistic and it sets people up to fail. I think it's appalling. Well, we're also not looking at the things that need healing and transmuting and clearing, are we? No, like, but also those yeah. words are too big for yeah. most of us yeah. most of the time. Mm. You know, we just need to, make, need to make adjustments, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, the, the, uh, as I say, and I, I don't like, um, as I say, you've got, to be, you've got to see the positive side of everything. No, you haven't. Mm. Sometimes sitting down, having a good fat cry is exactly what it's you very, ought to be doing. Yeah, and it's the... Yeah, best yeah. medicine. Yeah, you yeah, also have to realise that crying every day for a week isn't what you want to be doing. <laughs> you, you've got to think, all right, then now fair enough. You know, I've I've done that yeah. one, and and, and move, gently move yourself away from it. It's all about balance and moderation, isn't it? You know, yeah. if they they say that if you lived on McDonald's, you know, for a, a month or something, that you might die. But equally, if you just lived on lettuce for a, you know any length of time, yeah, you would balance. also die. It's all the balance. universe likes balance. Yeah. That's the thing. But what we don't like is change. Mm. It's so scary to us, mm. and it, so we have to little baby steps. Yeah.
and then you look back. That's where keeping a diary, keeping a dream diary are very, very useful. None of this you should obsess about. It shouldn't be, you shouldn't over-elevate it. You should just quietly do it. And you then can look back and think, oh, blimey, did I really think that? Or, you know, saw green. And then you think, oh, I saw these cushions and they were so lovely, I had to have them. And of course they were the green cushions. Yeah. So you can marry it up without lying to yourself. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I want, obviously, I mean, today, while we're doing this interview, mm -hmm. is a big full moon. And I just wondered if, uh, if you had any tips for full moon magic that people could do on a day like today. Don't go too crazy. <laughs> or if you are a control freak, go crazy. Mm. Go out into the garden, take all your clothes off and dance around. Mm. The likelihood of your neighbours being looking out of their bedroom's windows is remote. You know, scare the foxes, yeah. but don't hold yourself back. Mm. Go do it. Or luxuriate in water, have an indulgent bath, mm. things like that, you know. And if things are a bit jangled, then appreciate that they're a bit jangled because it's a full moon. People would sleep less, people, they, you know, the lunatic idea, all the rest of it then kind of run with that and dare to have crazy ideas about what you actually want to do. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of sober up mm -hmm. after that and think, well, yeah, I can't do that, but I can do this. Mm -hmm. So you use whatever, whatever the, wherever the moon is doing, use it. You know, if it's waxing, then it's something you want to bring into your life, work towards that. If you want to get rid of stuff when the moon's waning, let it take it away for you. Mm. Now, night like this, use a you know if you use running water again. If there's something or someone that's been bugging you, write it down, burn it, flush the ashes away. You know, use the water to take the emotion, the intensity of that that you feel away with it you know we haven't all got a river to hand no so flush no. it you know flush it down the toilet one of my favorite pastimes <laughs> writing things down and burning it i think <laughs> my, my husband's like are you using the barbecue as a cauldron again yes, <laughs> like, yes, yes i am because <laughs> i need to burn the shit out of this Sorry. yeah but that's good urban, that's <laughs> yeah. a good urban magic using it's the barbecue great. you see yeah. yeah yeah and we do have a weber so it is like a massive big cauldron mm -hmm. yeah no, good fun yeah good fun really yeah. good fun yeah that's amazing yeah and being polite i think you know pleases and thank yous yeah. they go a long way when you want to do any magic at all and it's not you know, hard can i have a bit of help here please yeah. you know and thank you very much for bothering to listen that's it don't yeah. be over holy yeah. don't be over spiritual about it just be polite and just acknowledge that you wouldn't be ask wanting to do something um, in this sphere if you didn't believe there was something else out there mm -hmm. so the least you can do is knock on their door politely yeah you know and the thank you obviously it's a it's that energy of gratitude isn't it and yeah. it sort of opens the door for more as well it's like thank you i appreciated that yeah but Please don't come be again. over grateful don't <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know people think that you know by um being thankful and all these things it makes it more valid and mm. more spiritual it, it just makes them seem creepy sometimes <laughs> yeah because you can't but you can't is, you can't yeah. thank you for it you know one thank you once a day is good. Well, there's, the way I see it is where it, it, it's all equal. There's no hierarchy, is there? So don't put anything outside of you on a pedestal either. It's it's with love and respect for all. Uh, yeah, but some things have earned their position in, yeah. in yeah. The, the other lives yeah. as well. You know, you, I think hence healthy the, respect. The respect. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Amazing, yeah. Geraldine. Thank you so much pleasure. for talking to me today. A pleasure. A pleasure. Okay, <Yeah>. Good so, stuff. so pleased to be here. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. Thank you. Pleasure to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm here with Geraldine's daughter, Barley, who co-runs the shop with Geraldine. <laughs> yes. And uh, so, Barley, what's your favourite thing about Atlantis Bookshop? All of it. I've grown up with it. I know no other life, really. You know, I sat on my grandmother's knee behind the till as a baby, and you know, I had it all to myself yeah. to that extent. So I've grown up with it. I love it. Every day is different. It's an adventure. Do you have a favourite uh, topic or a favourite book that you've come across while you've been here? Um, it depends what I'm in the mood for, really. Um, I, I like f sort of flitting about because I can use it as a reference library to that extent. So um, I'm much more at home with the sort of the cooking and the natural witchcrafty things, I suppose, because it's what mostly I've been brought up with. Having said that, I like some of the ceremonial bits too. It, as I say, it just depends on the mood I'm in. 
Amazing, amazing. Oh, well, people and always think there's something going on here, yeah. you know, and we've had everything from there's a little old lady sitting in the armchair to someone sitting on top of the bookcases, random. Um, you know, oh, there is. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, and downstairs especially, because you hear the rumbling of the tubes and things, they think they're having a, a deep spiritual experience. <laughs> but actually, it's just modern day happening to them. <laughs> yeah, it's not um, Voldemort's huge snake no, coming through no, the tunnels to no, get to you. No. <laughs> but I, I've heard rumour that um, that Tolkien has been into the yeah, shop Yeah, Tolkien well. was published further up Museum Street, and so he, he would pop in and things on his way past and say hello to Michael and stuff. So. Wowzers, yeah. amazing. And we and you stock some Tolkien in here yeah, as well. Yeah, little odd bits little here bits. and there, you know. So, yeah, and but we're, we, we was, as Geraldine said, we were set up by magicians for magicians, and so lots of our customers have gone on to become authors, which yeah. is wonderful, and lots of our authors have been customers. Yeah. So people like Crowley, everyone knows of, but um, the artist Austin Osmond Spare, Dion Fortune, W.B. Yeats, you know, the Farrows. J.K. Yeah. Rowling, did you? I suppose you can't give it away, uh, can yeah, you? Well, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think there might be a little bit of influence yeah. in here in Harry Potter. Yeah, I like to think this is what um, Harry Potter would have studied at Hogwarts. Yeah. You know, this is the, the reference material to that extent. So. It, it's a little bit smaller than Hogwarts, but I mean, I think the, the amount of knowledge in here is just as extensive if not more I mean yeah. you're just looking around I could and it's delve always in. changing as well you mentioned earlier that we have like new and second hand we have them mixed on the shelves so you actually have to look at the shelves you can browse as a bookshop should be used you yeah. know and you can ask us questions and that kind of thing we're here to help but as say you can find it for yourself which and is the fun of it open a page exactly. and if it talks to you then exactly. you can rather than going have you got this in yeah, stock a bit of old fashioned bibliomancy never hurt anyone <laughs> my favourite pastime and you never know what you're going to find exactly it's yeah. part of the adventure fantastic is there anything else you'd like to tell us any other stories or quirks that you'd like to share from your time here Bali do you remember <laughs> I can't think of anything that I'll share at this I'm time you no, no no let's leave that there <laughs> okay.